Willie D Live. It's Willie D, y'all. Back with another episode of information and instructions to help you navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world. In the studio, pimping Ken Ivy and dun dun dun, Game God, Goldie, the one and only. <laughs> Man, Game God, Goldie, the one and only. Now, do you say that always the same way? I say it like, the same way every Game time. Game God. Hey, just like Weezy had baby, please say the on. baby. Yeah. Game got go to you. Got to please say it all, you know? Pimp name slip back. Uh, <laughs> you got to say the whole thing. Man, how did you guys come together? First of all, you know I I know your I know your record. Right. I'm, I was unfamiliar with you, Goldie, yeah. until I started seeing these interviews that you guys were doing together. Yeah. Now, I heard you talking. Boy, you got a mouthpiece. You're cold-blooded. <laughs> <laughs> More important than your mouthpiece is your brain, the way you think, the way you're wired. How did you two guys come together? Man, I love when he tell the story. Go ahead, let him know how it happened. Well, you know, uh, it was it was a situation where he came to me, and the situation went all the way together. So I said, brother, you know, I like the way you demonstrate. I said, I want to come on your show. He has a podcast, too. So I went on his podcast, and when I went on his podcast, he started putting the videos out. And the videos did half a million, a million, uh, 250,000, and we knew then that, you know, we were Batman and Robin. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And we was a dynamic duo. And I think that that's really what fostered our relationship. And at the same time, you know, he know that, you know, I'm the uh, founder of the Hip Hop Fraternity, and I am also have Hip Hop Fraternity, HHF Management, so I said, brother, you know, I would like to manage you. you know, I would like to show you, you know, that I could take you places, you know, where no nigga been before, you know, in your space. And he said, uh, cool. So I was like, okay, let's get together. And we started doing this podcast run, started going to these different platforms. And now everybody, when they see him, they see me, and they be like, man, where he at? <laughs> if, he, if I'm by myself, they ask me where he at. If he by himself, they ask me, they ask him where I'm at. So I think that... You know, but but more than the, more more important than anything though, brother Willie, is that the brother's intelligence. You know, a lot of people don't know that I did ten years in prison. You know, I read a lot. You know, I always tell people, they say, "Well, man, your name Pimpy Kid." I said, "Well, Malcolm's name was uh, Malcolm Little." I said, "If you love Malcolm, you should love me. He was a pimp too." You know, so you know that is one of the things people don't know. I liken myself not as Malcolm X, but some of the same roles that Malcolm took. I took right. And while Malcolm was in the prison, he educated himself. While I was in prison, I educated myself as well. You know, I know all about Islam. I know about Christianity. I know about history and everything. I read every historical book you could read, every biblical book you could read, every Quranic book you could read. So I'm looking at it the way you're looking at it. I can see the wisdom, you know, coming from his uh, his person and emitting from his body. And I said, man, this dude here, you know, Outside of, you know, the gold and the jewelry and the flash, you know, he's a really brilliant young man. And that's what right. really attracted him to me. And hey, you got to tell him about the book. You know, we didn't even know this, but one of the biggest stories that I have is, you know, the first book I ever read as an adult was Think and Grow Rich. And that changed oh, yeah. my life completely and got me on a journey of reading books and getting wisdom. And he told me the same thing after we met, that he read Think and Grow Rich in prison. And that at, changed his life as well. At the same age, 19. Yep, we both read it at 19. No, when, Who's when the I, author of that book? Napoleon yeah. Hill. It's, a, it's well, an awesome book. You alluded to it earlier. Let's go back to pimping. Okay. How do you feel about the accusations that people say that pimping inherently uh, exploits and degrades women? Well, I say that people don't understand the game. You know, 99% of the women out there today is pimpless. They're doing it on their own. You have lawyers, doctors. You have women. I know you been in the entertainment business. I know you went in the strip club in Magic City somewhere. They say, oh, I'm just dancing to go to college. You know, and people get this misconception because it started in 1960s with the exploitation of African-American films. You know, your, your uh, Wooly Dynamite, uh, your uh, uh, The Mac, uh, you know, Superfly. They start depicting African-American men as like savages and women beater. But it all go back to the birth of a nation, you know, under Jim Crowism. You know, when Europeans first start depicting us as below, 
you know, human and, you know, blacks only, whites only. That's Jim Crowism. So it started then, but then it kicked back in, you know, during the 60s because you had Black Power, the Black Panthers, you had Elvis Cleavers, you had Huey Newton, you had uh, Minister Farrakhan, you had Malcolm X, you had a bunch of conscientious things going on at that era in time. So they had to do something to depict that. And Brother Wesley Muhammad, who's a part of the Nation of Islam, he said, you know, not only did they did that, they did what you call counterinsurgency drugs. Every time we do something that's heroic or we get into a situation where we're talking about revolution, they introduce heroin to us. And then after heroin, you know, you had the era of Minister Farrakhan, the Million Man March, they introduced crack to us around the same time as the Million Man March. And this is this ploy of our enemy, our diabolical enemy. He does this continuously you know, to debase us. So one of the things that they do is they say that the pimp is a woman beater, that the pimp is a clown. And, Willie, I don't know if you know, but I know some pimps that play golf, that wear nothing but Imani suits, that, that go to uh, uh, political campaigns, that donate money to and you would never know that they pimping. And most of them are white. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what they don't tell you, that, you know, uh, Dennis Hoff, who owned the Bunny Ranch was a white man. He had 19 prostitutes at any given time selling real legal coochie. So and they we got allowed the, it. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so they, they. And then, then another thing they don't say about the word pimp in the 1800s. Did you know, Mr. Willie, that pimp mean debonair and gentleman? It didn't become negative until the 60s, and that's what people don't understand. You know, and, and and we know prostitution is the world oldest is the world's oldest uh, profession. So we know that you know African Americans didn't have nothing to do with that. And then even if you want to know where the concept, of, uh, you know, this is this legendary game that was passed on to me from other ism. You know, we call ism pimps all the way back in the day. They said it really started with the European raping our women. The white man, the slave owner, the master used to rape the women. And the men couldn't do nothing about it because they were slaves. They were chattel slavery. They were actually registered slaves. So what the men would do, they were married to the woman. They would say, hey, next time master take you in that room and he have sex with you, he give you one poor child, ask for two poor childs. So that system of manipulation began in slavery. So in 1865, when the, the, the so-called black man finally got his emancipation proclamation, his freedom, he started, he knew that the white man had an appetite for the black woman. That's why you always see these uh, uh, light-skinned brothers. They didn't come, they, you know, we came over here dark as tar. You know what I'm saying? The baby, the light-skinned people came from amalgamation. European slave masters amalgamated with our sisters, raping them, you know, if you want to go by to today's society terms, and, 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 and then sending them back out there. And, you know, here you is, you dark as tar, and, you know, this, she's talking about some baby, we having another child, and the child come out half white. You know, she know, he know that what really happened was she was raped. So we start manipulating. And then, you, you know, it's an old saying, back in the days when you see those black men uh, with those uh, carriages and those horses, and you thought they were, uh, 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 what do they call them, uh, butlers or, or drivers? No, they were pimps. So they went from horsey backs to Cadillacs. See what I'm saying? So that's mm. how you get that scenario. But it all comes from, you know, a, 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 a system of manipulation. It also comes from degradation. Them raping our women. Like, really, literally raping our women. That's where you get light-skinned babies from. You know what I'm saying? It comes from the raping of our sisters. You know what I'm saying? Our, our ancestors, so to speak. So that's how we get to it. But, you know, another thing that... The reason you ask why pimps is looking at negative, you got to remember, 99, I say about 70% of the tricks is white men, successful white men. You know, coochie is expensive. $1,000, you got to have a good job. You got to have some kind of business about yourself. So the senators and the congressmen, you know, at one time, the track was in Washington, D.C. You know, the track is where prostitutes sell their body at. And all of the dates and the tricks of that era of time were the senators. So you got to remember, those are the ones who make the laws. They hate the fact that a, a black man who calls himself a pimp, right, can take a woman, a white woman, and send him, her him way, his way, and he give her everything because of the power of the coochie. And he, he, he can't even control his, his, his little head. 
He, cause she she got him so tied up, tied up, and then she give him all the money. He hate that. So that's why the laws are so strict. Man, they man, it is they they treat a pimp worse than they treat a rapist, a murderer. This dude, yeah, 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 yeah. And and this is this is what I wanted to get to about that. I just find it very hypocritical that you have these guys out here who are tricks. Yeah, for instance, Donald Trump is one of the biggest tricks in the United States of America. Yeah, I said it. He's a trick. He got three baby mamas. If it wasn't for tricking, he wouldn't have no kids. <laughs> now, what I want to know is, how do you guys feel about these type of guys, oh, you know, writing these laws and forcing these laws about prostitution, locking, trying to lock you up? While at the same time trying to get a little peace on the side for themselves. Well, it goes back to what I was saying, Brother Willie. You know, uh, these men are jealous of black men. You know, black men have always been, you know, the gods of the universe. I mean, it's because of a chemical that is formed during the early fetus called melanin. And the melanin creates motor skills as well as intellectual skills. That's who we are, you know, and we able to be in any situation, especially what you brothers did with hip-hop. You know, what y'all did with hip-hop is amazing. It's the number one genre of music in the world. So that's one of the main issues is, you know, the jealousy of the black man. And uh, Frances Quest Wilson, she wrote a book called The ISIS Paper. She said the biggest fear of any people, of any nation, of any planet, is the black man penis. Because that's where you have the real weapon of mass, destru weapon of, of mass destruction because be through the genetics and through the amalgam amalgamation and now amalgamation and copulation of sex with with that species, the the African Americans and whatever other group, you know, we can annihilate them, and that baby will invariably come out darker. It was a, it was a guy named Mendo in biology. He said you can get the dominant out the recessive, you can't get the recessive out the dominant. Therefore, dominant genes are stronger, and that's one of the main reasons is you know they uh, don't like us. And, you know, at the same time, they love coochie. So, you know, because they have the power and because, you know, we as a so-called people, we fall into these traps. And like I, I said uh, on one other program, I said that America is 5 percent of the world's population, but has 25 percent of the world's incarceration. Six percent of that are African-Americans. When you talk about African-Americans, you're talking about eligibility, you're talking about not women, not uh, disability, not children. So 6% of us are eligible people that can go to jail. Out of that 6% that go to jail, we represent 50% of the prison populations. That means that 12.5% of the brothers in jail are African Americans in the world. But we're only 6% of eligibility and we're only 13% of the population. So if you take that 40 million that represent that 13%, and you take that and put that down to 6%, you know, you're talking about a small denomination, right? But yet, you know, we are the most targeted, and we are the ones that put it in jail the most. So what they do is not only do they use that as a means of, you know, uh, 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 trying to incarcerate us, but they do it to try to social engineers. So yeah. the same people that's buying the coochie also are benefiting from us do CCA, Correctional Corporation of America, which is a privatized uh, company that only New York Stock Exchange that benefit from hotels in the prison. That's what prisons are, they hotels. You know, you can't have hotels without occupants. So, you know, that's all a part of the divine scheme, too. And they don't have no problem with locking peas up because you got to think about it. These are the guys that they are mad at because these are the guys that send these women out to get their money. And that's why they attack the ism. That's why they lock young men up, because they know that these men that uh, are so-called pimps are the ones that are the ones that's manipulating these women that they can't manipulate, that they're weak to. Yeah, go to you from SAC time. Yeah. I got, what a, was you, what, yeah. I got a perspective on that. I understand yeah. what he's saying, and I agree that's a part of it, but I understand where they're coming from, honestly, because from their perspective, it all looks the same to them. Human trafficking, real human trafficking and pimping from the outside looking in, they, they put it all together. The game is a secret society. 
you don't really understand the inner workings unless you're in it. So from the outside of their perspective, it all looks the same. You know, and human trafficking is a terrible thing. So they don't understand that in the lifestyle, I'd say 99% of the women in the game is by choice, not by force. And these women are willingly giving their money away and can willingly leave whenever they want to. But because they on the outside looking in, they don't understand that. All they see is the headlines. And we're not going to sit here and act like it isn't certain pimps out there doing what we call guerrilla activities, you know, doing these things, getting women strung out on drugs. That's not the majority. That's a minority, but that's what they put in the media. So from the outside looking in, if you're not in this society and all you're seeing is what they're showing you, then, yes, we need to lock them up. So from their perspective, I understand where they're coming from. It's just not what they think it is. And I'm, I've never been a pimp, but I came up around players and around the game, so I've seen it for myself. Right, right. And the trip part about it is, even though you've never been a pimp, you got the pimp game down pat, you know, in, ter- in terms of in terms of how to uh, in terms of how to deal with women on a, from a psychological standpoint. Yeah. You know, I came up around a lot of players. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you a quick origin story. You know, I was 16 years old, living a regular life, you know, had a girlfriend and everything. And my uncle from Oakland. You know, he moved down the street from me and it broke my paradigm. At the time, they had uh, the Hummer H2 at the time. You know, he came down the street riding in a Hummer H2. He had the 26-inch rim in the back. You know, he had a woman next to him, three women in the back. He had a two-door Benz, a four-door Benz, a huge house, had women rubbing his back, cooking for him, rubbing his feet at the same time, and it broke my paradigm. You know, and it let me know that it's other ways to live outside what I've been socially programmed to live that didn't feel right anyway. I'm lying to this woman I'm with. I'm cheating this. And I'm seeing him not having a lie. He's doing what he wants, how he wants, and he's letting a woman choose or refuse to deal with him. And I was so attracted to that. And now that I look back, I was attracted to the manhood in it. The lifestyle to me, it was flashy, but it was seeing real men not lying to their wife, not want lying to their girl, doing what they want, when they want, how they want, standing on it and letting a woman choose to be with them or not. And that's what was attractive to me. Right, right, right. That is always that, that's one of the things that a lot of guys miss. That that honesty, uh, it goes a long ways. Just tell them straight up, and that this is why some guys, you know, they get accosted in nightclubs, and women want to <laughs> fight them on, <laughs> and they women fighting over fighting over these guys. You know, I've never had a situation like that before in my life. <laughs> I've never had a situation where a woman approach me in the nightclub because I'm talking to another woman or whatever or two women squabbling because I never put myself in those type of positions because I just tell them straight up, this is what it is. Right. That's how you got to be. You know, that, that's, hey, that's a principle in the game. You know, Mel Terry used to say it best. Before you anything, you got to be a man first. Before you a doctor, before you a lawyer, before you a pimp, you got to be a man first. So the principles of the game is being a man first. And people don't understand that. Yeah. People don't understand that. What else... Do, don't don't people understand about relationships, especially these vanity type dudes, these type of dudes who get caught up in the big booty. You know, she she got a cute face. She got mm-hmm. some big boobs, whatever that physical attraction is. How do how do you, you know, how do you convey to these t- guys that that ain't what works that's not going to be to your best advantage long term. I break it down simply for them, right? What are you really looking at? What are you really valuing? Why do you want this quote unquote bad bitch, right? Why? If you ask most dudes, they couldn't even tell you, but I'll tell you why. Because you get status when you have a bad bitch next to you in the club, right? That's like having a Lamborghini. If you walk into a club with a bad bitch, people shaking your hands, people when you turn around, you know they're giving you a handshake, they're giving you a salute. These dudes care what other dudes think. So even though he's going home and this woman is giving him hell, he knows when he goes out, he's going to get the status from that woman, right? So they have to break down, well, why do I care what other people think so much? Because that's the only reason you're dealing with a woman who looks good, but it's no good to you because of what these other people think. Hey, and then I break, right. it down, oh, I break it down a little bit further and say this, because this is what I say. First, number one, it's elementary thinking. You have not elevated from spiritually elementary thinking if you're still going off of what's on the outside, not the inside. Because everybody knows from anything in life, if you have any amount of wisdom, that what's on the inside always matters most. I don't care how nice the veneer on a building is it could be gutted inside right it's what's on the inside that i don't care how nicely candy painted a car is if the head gasket is blown and the transmission is out that car is worthless but somehow we know that in every other area of life but when it comes to a woman we care what's on the outside more than the inside they got to elevate mentally but let's break down a bad woman Mm. what are you really looking at right nice hair uh, uh a bbl nice ass fake titties 
makeup, they faces painted on, take them eyelashes off, take the eyeliner off, wipe the paint off her face, take the extensions out, the, 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 the uh, wig, really break her down from everything that she put on. It's a costume. When you take that costume off, most of these women are average at best, right? So what you're saying is I'm giving this woman all this value because she put on a costume? Right. So when you really start looking at women and just stripping that down mentally, that's what I teach in one of my courses. Strip that down mentally. Now, what she says to you, how she treats you becomes very important. Her character becomes very important. Looks always fade. So if looks always fade, what's going to be left after you had sex with her a hundred times, after you've been seen out with her a hundred times? Now, what really matters now? How good she is to you, how she treats you, what's her soul like? Are your values aligned? You know, it's just elevating a mindset and really seeing what they're doing. Yeah. How do you feel about the living me? Uh, I'm okay with it. I mean, I feel like every man should live based on whatever his principles are. If you feel like you want to have multiple women, I feel like you should do that. But polygamy, that's not a that's not a broke man's sport, right? Because you have to be able to take care of these women depending <laughs> on how you do it, right? You have to be able to equally, uh, in other countries, you have to equally be able to give what you give one woman to all other women. And most dudes want to do it because of the sex aspect. And that's, that's probably the worst reason to do it. At the end of the day, I do feel like a man of status should be able to have multiple women. You know, a man has desires innately. So if he's able to have the funds and the means to have multiple women, why not? And a lot of dudes should try it because you would be surprised what a woman would be okay with if you gave it to her up front. If when a woman met you, you said instead of sneaking around, cheating and her getting mad at you, laying the key in your car. But if you told her, listen, baby, I like you. You know, I like what we have going. But I know myself and I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to stop seeing other women. I'm not saying I'm going to do it every day. But if I have the inclination and I meet a woman and I want to have sex with her, I'm going to do that. Are you okay with that or not? If you gave it to a woman that raw, men would be surprised how many women would go like this, but then like, damn, he's being real. My, my man going to cheat on me anyway. At least he going to keep it real with me, you know? What do you say to the women out there that say, well, if he can do it, I can do it. I got money. I'm making my own money now. I don't need, I don't need him to pay for nothing. I got my own house, got my own car. Hey, you know, if I want to have extra men and, do this and do that. I can do it. If he can do it, I can do it. It's a new day. Women are in charge. Liberation. <laughs> I would say this. If you want to do that, go ahead and do it. But the thing is, you don't want to do it. You just want to do it because you see the man doing it. But you don't, she don't really want that. She wants one man. And if she wants to do that, she knows what the label is going to be. That's called a slut. And if you want to walk around and have people label you with that, you know, they got the slut walk now. So maybe she's okay with it. My thing is this. I feel like everybody should do whatever they want to do. If a woman want to have a whole bunch of dudes, go ahead and do that. She's not going to be fulfilled, you know. A woman's going to be more fulfilled. I tell women like this. A piece of me is more than a, a whole one dude that you can get. Because most of these dudes, they lying. They don't have any information to give you. They're going to cheat on you anyway. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it up front. And you even going to meet these women if I let you, you know. So it's a difference. Ladies, are y'all ready for that? I think that's mm -hmm. the first time I ever asked a question like that. Yeah, that was big, man. That <laughs> on the show. Are y'all ready for the real? Are you ready for the real? They would rather you lie to them and go behind their back than keep it real. But what I say is this. Man, you dudes need to stop getting your, your key, your, your car keyed up. You know, she's she coming to your job. She, she's, she's messing your job up. She's calling this. She's doing that. She's putting all these posts on Facebook, making you look bad. Why? Because you lied. Stop lying to these women. The moment you lie to a woman, you, she loses respect for you. And when the respect is lost, it's lost. It's gone. You'll never get it back. Right. Let her know what you're going to do. If you get caught cheating and she asks you about it, tell her. Right. If you tell a woman up front, listen, I'm going to do what I want to do. If she finds out you're dealing with another woman, how mad can she really be? She's not going to keep my car about it. Why? Because I gave her the option. I'm going to tell you what it is and let you accept or refuse it. Man, and dudes... Don't understand. It's plenty of women out here that will accept it. You just they, you just never gave them the option to. Yeah. There's a story out right now. It's a reoccurring story. Actually, it first happened in 2022. But there was a guy who was a married guy who was dating his 20-year-old side piece. And she called his uh, wife and revealed the, the relationship. And... He killed her. Oh, no the way. guy, the guy. First of all, the guy called her mom about a week before he killed her, and he said, "Look, I'm trying to break it off with your daughter, but she won't leave me alone. She's calling my wife." And you know, next thing you know, the dude had slashed her throat, hmm. he tied her up, shot her, Damn. and set her on fire. 
Damn, he's 20, 20 years old. And, you know. He 20? The girl was 20. Wow. He was 53. Wow. See, the, the thing is, is that, like Goldie was saying, that transparency means a lot. Being honest would have st- prevented yep. all of that. Yep. Because if he would have just been straight up and say, this is what it is, I don't need you tripping. If, I'm, if you're going to step out, if you're going to step out, first of all, you tell your woman, look, I'm stepping out, you know. I got this here. I'm doing this here. So if she made the phone call, it wouldn't have been no big deal. You just now yeah. you know she don't know how to follow instructions. You right. cut her off. Right. You know, right. if she don't know how to listen to you, you cut her off. Absolutely. But this guy, so there's enough blame here to go around. This guy should have known. This girl is 20 years old. She not gonna play by the rules. She gonna be mm-hmm. in her. She gonna be in her feelings. You know, she's 20 years old. Right. You know, she's a puppy. Right. You know, and. Uh, she should have known at 20 years old by the time you turn 20 that people will go to any extent to keep a secret. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some people will go to yeah. any extent to yeah. keep a secret. Mm. And it's, it's just a tragedy and it's a it's a repeated tragedy. I've seen it all the time. Yeah. It, happen, it happens all Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's crazy. You know, I, I really respect uh, what you did bringing Goldie under your wings yeah. because a lot of guys in your position would have felt threatened. You know, you've been... You've been that guy for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're getting up in age and you're looking at the youngster. You're going like. <laughs> but, you know, I want to address that. You know, yeah. me being a brother, you know, a member of the Moore Science Temple, right? Yeah. Following the Honorable Noble Drew Ali for over 40 years, you know, I've been able to look at other organizations, right? And I see a lot of our leaders in position, right? And they never pass on the baton. They suck on their popsicle to a number of stick left. And mm. then you know, they want to pass the stick. And now everybody tripping, like, who who should be the leader? The leader? Then you got these other groups popping up. So, you know, uh, I think it's imperative for those who have wisdom. See, old age is not for me. Old age is for him, for me to pass the wisdom on to him. You see, and anybody that's wise understands seasons, right? You know, you know, uh, we use the, uh, you know, the fall, you know, the fall to... You know, those things that, you know, you don't need no more, they fall off. You know, the spring, you know, that give you water, that, you know, that, 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 that give you blessing. The sun is when, you know, it beams on you, shine. But when you, old man winter, you know what I'm saying, that's when you pass on the wisdom. And I think that, you know, people got to understand that you got different seasons in your life. And I think in particular in the African-American community, in particular in the church, mo- more so than anything, you know, our pastors, you know, they want to preach until, you know, it's just, you know, they're 90 years old, they crip it, they having uh, the pastor, uh, uh, what they call it, dinner or whatever, and they just old and they just don't want to give it up. And in the game, you know, a lot of guys like that too, you know, but I feel, and I've been giving up for a long time, you know, Pimp C, I gave him plenty of game. A lot of people, you know, industry, at 50 Cent, all these guys, and been blessed to get wisdom from me. But when I seen Goldie, and I seen him shining, and I'm seeing him represent what we, you know, what we like. It was incumbent upon me to work with this brother, because you know, he know I kind of pursued him. You know, I said, bro, I want to come to Miami and work with you. And then you know, he seen that I was genuine. He said, man, I ain't never met nobody that don't want nothing from me. You know, because you know, Goldie got a couple coins. You know, he said, ain't nobody want. And, and you know, like, you know, I ain't charging him. You know, for none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Me, my man, I said, bro, I want to manage you, you know, and like I said, like you said, you know, when I'm in interviews, if he's shining, I just want to sit back and let him shine. You know? Yeah, because when he shine, you shine. I don't, yeah. I don't, that's one thing that I do not get for some people. No matter what they have, they could have more if they were willing to bring up people under them and put other people on. Mm-hmm. I just, that's something that I just can't wrap my head around. Like, the reason why Jay-Z is standing up at the top of that mountain is because he's created other millionaires, Mm -hmm. like multiple millionaires. You can name them. You know, uh, so he got that. And, uh, you know, so the way that you're moving right now is is something to be be recognized and and commended about. What is it that you like most about working with Ken? Man, like he said, a genuine individual, you know, in the position that I'm in, you know, and I, I ain't doing too much, you know, but 
t- to my area. You know, I'm doing a lot. So a lot of when a lot of people see me, they're not trying to be genuine. They want something from me. They see the flash. They see the gold Rolls Royce. They see all these things, and they're coming with an angle to try to get something from me. And when Ken came, it wasn't trying to get something from me. It was kind of trying to help me. And when we first met, he he gave me my props and he let me know he liked what I'm doing. You know, nobody else did that. They come, they say they like what I'm doing, and they say, okay, this is how I'm going to try to extract some money from you. So he didn't come like that. And then just us being around each other, we have a lot of the same thoughts. We read the same books, and it was just really organic, you know? I feel like I've known him my whole life. <laughs> you got a gold Rolls Royce? Yeah. When, when you say gold, are you saying painted gold, or are you talking about it, real? A, a metallic gold metallic, wrap. Metallic gold 24 wrap. 24-karat gold wrap. Now, <laughs> now, how how do the uh, authorities respond to that when they see it rolling down the street and they see Well, that? I live in Miami. I live, a, a, you know, I ain't going to tell the building I live in. I live in a prestigious okay. building gotcha. in Miami. So it's a lot of people way more money than me, you know, Bugattis gotcha. and things. You go through my garage. So you know, my, my My car is actually one of the lowest on the totem pole where I live. So it's where I'm at, it's cool. But, you know, where I'm from, California, oh, I wouldn't dare. You know, they pull me over every two seconds, you know. Yeah. 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 Ken, are you from Milwaukee? Milwaukee, but I was yeah. born in Chicago. You so. were born in... See, that be confusing the hell out of me, because so, I was like, yeah, so. I know he got a ties to Chicago and Milwaukee, but which one is it that you were actually born so, in? So uh, I grew up uh, to, to 14 in Chicago. I used to live in the Robert Taylor Projects, 4759 mm. South Federal. Well, so notorious so, you know, all, Projects. All, all my cousins is gangsters, you yeah. know, uh, you know, all the ones that's in the, you know, Ike Taylor, that's my cousin, you know. All the brothers that run all that stuff, those are my family, right? You know, so I grew up with that, but I never participated, you know. I was there, you know, I was, you know, when stuff happened. But then my partner that came from Chicago with me, John Devine, J.D., he was a part of some stuff we called East Side Gangsters. So, you know, he was kind of standing on that mountain. And, you know, I stood on that mountain with them, but I never joined. You know, so people, you know, they see me, they say, oh, he from Chicago because I got a lot of, you know, family in Chicago that claims me. You know, he's like, yeah, he from Chicago. You niggas better not mess with him. And I got brothers in Milwaukee, you know, be like, man, he from Milwaukee, you know. So, but I represent Milwaukee more because everybody like to say they from Chicago, Willie. So I always say I'm from Milwaukee because I knew my game was tight, right? I didn't want to, you know, Bishop Don Juan here in Chicago. He can have Chicago. I wanted my own city. So I proclaimed Milwaukee. And, and my partners, we proclaimed Milwaukee even though we were from Chicago. You know, but a lot of people from Chicago goes to Milwaukee. It's only 90 miles away. It's like going from Galveston to Houston. So that was the kind of scenario right there. But I always say Milwaukee because, you know, it's so many giants. You know, you got Reverend Seymour. You got Bishop Don Juan. You know, you got G. Gug. You got, man, uh, uh, man, there's so many people. Where, man, where's Good Game from? Cleveland? Good Game from Cleveland. Yeah, he Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. he run Cleveland. Yeah. We call him. <laughs> yeah, that's our guy. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy. guy. I just talked to him two days, about three days ago. Man, I need yeah. to get your game a call. Yeah, I'm gonna Thank get it. I get his number yeah. for you. Yeah, but uh, you know that's what it what it is. So people always be like, uh, he's from no, nah, he's from Chicago. No, nah, he's from Milwaukee. No, nah, I'm born in Chicago. You know, I was raised. You know, my younger years in Chicago, but Milwaukee made me. You know, that's where I got all my game from. You know, that's what my daddy and all of them. You know, did they thing that you know my daddy now was players. You know, I grew up in the game. I ain't never not being around the game. So my father now laced me, and, you know, my father got his money and his name in Milwaukee. They called him Johnny Slick. Those who read my book, The 48 Laws of Pimpology, they read that part about my pops. You know, so that's why I, I ain't going to never not claim Milwaukee, man. I'm, just say right. I'm from Milwaukee, <laughs> man. You know? hey, 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 Goldie, check yes, this sir. out. Um, there's a, a big difference between men and women and I always say that there should be more of a difference between us than just our anatomy. The way we walk, the way we talk, you know, the way we, the way we think, you know, the way we dress, right? Yeah. A lot of us are unlearned. We're unlearned, mm-hmm. and we, but we're still in relationships with people, right? In your opinion, who is it harder to reprogram? A man or a woman? It's harder to reprogram the man 
right? Because who can tell a man something? Nobody. But the right man can tell a woman something. A woman will change for the right man. But a man, who's a man going to change for? Almost nobody. You know, because a man doesn't really have respect for anybody but himself. What, what can a man tell me? That's how most dudes come up. I didn't come up like that. You know, that's why I got all the game. Because I'm going to listen to my elders. That's where I soaked up all my game from. So, And I've reprogrammed plenty of women. You know, it could be a woman with one dude, you know, disrespecting them, doing this, doing that. And when she gets with me, he tells me about who she is. I say, oh, that's not the woman I got. Why? Because when a man is in his rightful position, a woman's going to be in her rightful position. And a woman wants to learn. But I'll be honest, right? And I don't like saying this because, you know, I like to give the game to the men. I've seen these dudes. I coach these dudes. A lot of these dudes is, is bitch made. I, I look at the, the, the pool of men and I say, I see why these women treat you like that. You, there's no leadership, there's no structure, there's no discipline, there's no principles. Why would she follow you if you have all the same bad habits as you just as emotional as her, right? She might as well grab the wheel because it looked like you're going to crash anyway. And that's what's going on right now. That's why we have to start with the men first. That's why I do my coaching. You got to become the man first worthy of being followed. Listen, you have to be head and shoulders above that women, woman in every area for her to listen to you and for her to follow you. And these dudes are not that these days. Right, man. You are on Point. the Money, baby, that's money. <laughs> I'm talking about, yeah, like, because I hear a lot of dudes be like, well, she won't let me be a man. She won't let me lead. I'm like, man, it ain't a woman made a woman <laughs> that can give me permission to lead. You, do you hear I, me? I want to comment on that, right? Permission I got... to be oh, yeah, a man. Ahead. You're like, I, that's, that's my essence. That's this what, is I, what am. I do. You know what I'm saying? Let, let, let me say the reason why. And I talk, me and Goldie talk about this all the time. The reason why, Willie, is because when you look at the Bible, the, the first chapter of the book of Genesis is the fall of man. He said, the woman that you gave me deceived me. Where are thy, Adam? He was hiding behind the bush because he ate from the so-called, depending on your religious preferences, the so-called tree of life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so now, uh, knowledge. So, so when you think about it, you got to understand, and I talk about this in my book, The Art of Human Chess, what is the purpose of a woman? The purpose of a woman is to challenge a man from A to Z. And what happens is men, women, men are stability and women are emotional. So what a woman do over a succession period of time, where you going, Willie? Who is that in your phone? And after a while, because you're not emotionally wired, wired to deal with that, you know what I'm saying, you start conforming. So you got to do 6'8 and a woman 5'3. Man, I can't go my woman tripping. You see what I'm saying? Because, through, see, God gave a woman the same thing he gave a skunk a white stripe in the belly for the funk. She could bring the funk. See, it's three levels of intelligence. <laughs> now, now, listen, though, bro. It's, it's three levels of intelligence. You got uh, IQ. That's intelligent quotient. That, that, that determines your intelligence level. You got EQ. That's emotional quotient. As Goldie said, a lot of men ain't too high in that level. You know, they don't have good emotion. You know, men, men women will sit back all day and plot. You come in the house, it's like an airplane. She comes, she says, how you doing, baby? I'm all right. Uh, how did work go? It went okay. Then she landed the plane. Who is that bitch in you? See what I'm saying? And we don't have time for that. You know, we so busy playing basketball, talking about what Jordan did and that and the other, and she's sitting back all the time thinking. So that's what her strength is. She don't have the physical brute of a man. So she can't do that. Then the next thing is AQ. That's adaptability quotient. Most men can't adapt to circumstances. They can't adapt to situations. That's why he said they're not willing to learn because they're complacent. I, 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 I have the hip-hop fraternity. I deal with young men all the time. I have 10,000 members in my organization. And oftentimes, guys say, Ken, same thing, go to say, man, let's go Let's go get some money. Let's go Let's go do our thing. They say, Ken, I want to get to 100. I get them to 99 and they self-destruct because they're com comfortable with 96 and 97. That's their comfort zone. You see what I'm saying? And they don't have the ability to adapt to success. You've been in, you didn't see millions of dollars. I know I've been to so many of your concerts. You know, you didn't see millions of dollars. You got a different view, purview of the world than the average man. The average man ain't seen nothing. You know, they get comfortable, they can't adapt until they go to prison. You know, and then they become gang members, and then they become what we call career criminals. But on, 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 on the streets, that's one of the biggest problems. Women can adapt. That's why he said they can learn. So give yeah. you an example. If uh, the average dude, the square dude, have a woman, she going to talk to him like a, a punk. When I, when I do like this, a woman going to get in pocket. She going to snap to everything I say because 
I'm programming her and I'm not allowing her to program me, as he was saying. You know, a lot of women program men to be, can you cuss on here? Yeah. Bitches. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, they program them to be bitches. That's why you see all these big old dudes in the club throwing dudes all the way across the thing. Those are the same dudes that you say, man, let's go to a, a, a Houston uh, a, a basketball game. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to a, a, a football Rockets, game. Right. Yeah, Houston Rockets. Let's go to a Houston Rockets game. He like, man, my girl tripping. You know, she... They got to have the girls got the code to their pass, they phone, the pass code to their phone. So that's one of the reasons too. A lot of cops are like that too. A yeah. lot of cops, they be, they billy badass on the streets. <laughs> but we can push home. everybody around. That's they why go because, home, because of, they snap and they losing it. They beat on their women and everything because they 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 don't know how to uh, respond to rejection yeah. or uh, they don't know how to communicate. You know. When their woman is not behaving like they want them to behave, uh -huh. yeah, yeah exactly. right. they want to police their own wife. You know, I tell dudes all the time: there's only one thing that you can do to a woman who gets out of pocket. See, and it's not put your hands on her because you're going to jail. But what you have to do is you have to be willing to leave, and most of these dudes aren't. If a woman does something that you don't like, and you've repeatedly told her that you don't like it, you need to sit her down and let her know. See, I'm big on communication in my household. You've been doing this. I don't like it. If it continues, we're going to have to part ways. Do you understand that? Mm. And you have to be willing to stand on it. If a woman does something that you don't like and she keeps doing it and you don't leave, why is she going to stop doing it? There are no repercussions that you're giving her. If there are no repercussions, there's no reason for her to stop. But if you leave and you stand on it, you can't leave and come back. You have to be willing to leave and stand on it. I say it all the time, man. I don't care if it's five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. If she gets out of pocket, I'm leaving that day and she knows it. And that's why she don't give me a problem because I love myself too much. You don't get points today for yesterday's game. I don't care if you've been silent for 15 years. Every day you got to come in this house with respect because I'm going to respect you. The day you don't give me my respect is the day I'm going to walk out the door. And if you're not willing to do that, she ain't never going to respect you because why would she? You're taking abuse from this woman and just accepting it. You're not to be respected. Only a man of respect is going to walk out the door. You don't have enough respect for yourself to walk out the door. I got enough respect for myself to walk out the door. Even if I'm living in a broad house, I'll go be homeless before I let this broad disrespect me. And these dudes ain't willing to do that. Yeah. Right. And the, the, and the understanding is, or should be, that it can only get worse. And it's yeah. not going to work itself out. Never. You know, if, if women are easier to program or reprogram... Yeah. Why is it so difficult for guys to just attempt to? I'm gonna tell you, it's <laughs> reprogram it's them. Simple. You cannot learn from somebody you don't respect. You, you go to school, the teacher has more credentials than you. You respect what they're saying. These women don't respect these men because these men haven't been displaying respectable behavior. You're lying to her. You're sneaking around. She sees all your deficiencies. She may not say anything because that's not her place, but please believe she sees it all. She sees that you said you was going to go to the gym and you stopped. She saw that you said you was going to cut out this and you didn't. She said you, you said you was going to stop drinking, stop smoking. She saw you start and stop. She sees you start and stop everything. She sees you sneaking around lying, sneaking around like a little broad. She has no respect for you. And if, you, if a woman does not respect respect you she's not going to listen and you damn sure ain't gonna be able to program that bullshit into her but when she comes across a man that she respects she'll sit down at his feet humbly but most of you guys are not that and that's why i always say work on yourself get yourself together stop lying because once the respect is lost it's lost you, you might as well just go get another broad because you can never really fix it that disrespect that disrespectful woman that you have you're not gonna fix it what you need to do is go get another broad learn from your mistakes and just be a stand-up man with that one because she ain't never gonna forget what you did and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, get a woman that's seven years younger than you. You got to be seven years your senior. And also, a woman respects you when you got your finances together or when you're intelligent. You know, a lot of men don't understand that men are actors and women are reactors. You got to find somebody to match your rhythm. See, a woman is a reflection of a man. That's what we say in the game. You know, my woman is a reflection of me. You know, and that's what dudes got to understand. Like Goldie saying, you got to stand on something. If you don't stand on something, you'll fall for anything, right? So you got to have principles, and principles, you got to forever live according. And me, me and Goldie being in a lot of interviews, and I, I get this, I like to get this analogy. Principles is like the alphabets, A, B, C, D. You're going to always spell dog, D, O, G, and cat, C, A, T. Those are characters in the alphabet, which are principles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are principles in the numerical system. The only way you get 
to change that is enhancement. When you got to zero, you got to go back to one and get to 10. And you can build it all the way to a billion. So those are characters. So established principles, you got to be a man of character, as Andre Taylor always said, you got to have a man of character. And that's how you're going to get your woman to follow you. People, man, you know, they say, Ken, how you do it? You know, how you have women, you know, that obey you and be with you all these years and do everything you say? It's because, you know, first of all, another thing that I didn't add, you got to reinvent yourself. You can't have comfortability. You can't be the same dude. You've been knowing me for years. Well, you know, I done went from the P of the year to, you know, hanging out with y'all, Pimp C, and getting on all these albums mm -hmm. to now, you know, being the founder of an organization, prestige Studios called Hip Hop Eternity. And I know that that's what my woman want to see. She want to see progress. You know, even when I used evolution. to have... Yeah, ev evolution, Darwin, the theory of evolution. Even when I had jewelry and all that back in the day, dudes don't know this, but this is the easiest thing. I used to go to my jewel and I say, man, remake this. So if I had a crown this year, I might have my name in diamonds with the same gold and diamonds. But the women love that. You know, they love that evolution. They love to see me progress. And that's what it is. You know, if you give a woman sperm, she'll give you a baby. You know what I mean? If you give her rules, you know what I'm saying, I mean, she'll give you obedience. Men are actors, women are reactors. Women are incubators. That's why they have children. You know, that's why they can carry babies for nine months. And you got to put in them, you know, what you want in them and what you give them is going to be what you get in return. That's real. Man, tell us some Pimp C stories. You know, Pimp was my, like my <laughs> little brother. He was like a little brother to me, but I know your experience with him was different. You know, everybody have their own experience. Well, so. everybody really like for me to tell the story about the, the sex tape, right? But I what tell, sex tape? Well, Pimp C showed me a tape many, many years ago with some uh, famous people on them. And uh, it was a famous rapper. It was a famous R&B chick. And people want me to say who it is. And I tell them the reason why I don't say it is because Pimp C didn't say who it was, right? But I say, use your imagination. There was a lot of famous women back then, Jennifer Lopez, Mary J. Blige, uh, Beyonce, uh, you know. Man, there was so many of them back then. You know, so you can use your own imagination. So that's one of the things. And a lot of people in the orbit, you know, are close, close like 17, you know, all of them. They know. They seen it. I wasn't the only one that who, seen it. Who's the guy in the tape? I can't say it. So, so you can't say the guy or the girl? Because... These people got family now, Willie, and they very successful. And so, so, so you, when you say Pimp C didn't say, you, you know, I mean, you, you're not saying that he didn't say to you. You're saying he didn't speak on it publicly. He didn't say publicly who who was in the tape. He didn't say publicly. And the reason why I had a movie called Pimpology is before it ever came out. It was a very successful movie. I was over his mama house, over Mama West house. I was showing him my movie, and he was showing me his movie. And that's what he said, Ken, you need to be a producer. He said, Dr. Dre, now, man, they got people making their beats. You can just put your name on the beat. I said, I can't do nothing like that, PFC. And, you know, I mean, another funny story is uh, how we met. Now, hold on, man. I ain't passed your <laughs> sex tape yet, man. Hold on. I see you trying to switch lanes. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Let's go back to sex tape, man. What, what, what? Any clues or something, man? Give me a clue or something. Well, all I can tell you, man, is that you know, at one time, you know, I mean, still, she was a very successful R&B chick. And uh, the guy, he had a little money at that time. I'm pretty sure that most people in the comments usually figure it out, and some of them be correct. So that's the most I can say about it. Man, that, that yeah, is yeah, the yeah. most yeah. ambiguous <laughs> accusation I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, but hey, like, but 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 the, to my credit, seventeen and a few other people seen the tape too. So I'm not the only person that's seen the tape, you know. And they didn't get on other platforms and talk about them seeing 17, the tape. Seventeen? What do you mean seventeen? Seventeen is Pimp C artist. You know, they did a song called Certified, an album called Certified Before He Died. It was uh -huh. the, it was a, he was a UGK artist for, uh, you know, uh, Pimp C. So he he seen it. You you was hanging out with Pimp really tough before he died. Like I mean, right. yeah. Every time I look up, you, you know, I'd call him. Man, 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 we can't. In fact, you know, I said what's up to you a few times when y'all was together. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Pimp, you know, we know that Pimp died. Uh, at least they reported that Pimp died of of um, an accident. Sleep apnea. 
Oh, okay. So I thought that they had said something about an accident or overdose or something. Okay. But they, in, in any event, do you think that foul play was involved of in course. Pimp's death? Of course, man, because Pimp, you know, I've been knowing the man for years. You know, when he went to prison, I was the only one that went down there to see him. He said that on my movie, uh, Best of Both Worlds. You know, and I, I seen him get high and do his thing. You know, I mean, you know, we all get high and smoke weed, do all kind of shit, right? So uh, I seen him do his thing, and Pimp been doing whatever he been doing for a long time. I can't see him, you know, all of a sudden, you know, dying, you know, from some drugs, you know, when this man it was a seasoned veteran and whatever he do, right? So, you know, that was, to me, was foul play. And there was a lot of other things that, you know, I can't say that I was privy to, you know. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they say something about this dude in Mississippi. I don't know nothing about that. You know, they said that, you know, he had done something to pimp and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I know, I talked to, uh, I, I guess, a guy named, you know, what's his manager his name, Ruben? Is that the dude? It's been so many years. Uh, Who's manager? Pimp C, the dude. Uh, that well, helped, we did, Mama we, West was managing uh, no, 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 uh, Pimp C. Uh, uh, it was a guy, manager, Ruben, Rick. I think his name was Rick. And, uh, Rick we, Ruben? No, 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 no. His name, Ruben. his name was. We we did a deal with Universal, me and Pimp, you know, for uh, three million dollars for uh, a, a movie deal for five movies, and he the one that brokered the deal. Unfortunately, the guy that was brokering, you know, or financing the guy named D. Shea out of Nashville, he put up a few hundred thousand dollars to help us get that deal. He went indicted. He got indicted by the feds. Pimp said, man, not the money. You know, Pimp said, man, the money to get locked up. I said, yeah, the money gone, Pimp. You know <laughs> the saying? money got locked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, so Pimp was mad. <laughs> and then we would say, okay, we're going to do the deal with Dr. Dude, right? We're going to still make it happen. Pimp died right after that. But that dude, whoever that dude was, I can't remember his name. He gave us the contract. He broke the deal with, a, a, I know his wife, Shannara, probably know who I'm talking about. But, yeah, you know, that was, uh, you know, uh, he was saying some stuff to me about some stuff. He like, man, Ken, what the what the woo? This is this is going on. You 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 need to man bring your gangsters up here. I said, man, well, I don't, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? But he was he was really hysterical. He was talking about you know people was in the lobby and people was tripping about you know some shit. I was like, man, I ain't got nothing to do with that one. Probably. He had something to do about that tape. You think he had something no, to do with that tape? No, no, it was it was more so you know pimp. Uh, with that saying a lot, you know, he, you know, he had a lot of, a lot of uh, relationships with different people and, you know, he had a lot of business with people, right? And people around him probably didn't know the business, you know, because I was there, you know, like you said, Mama West managed him. I managed him. I did a lot of shows for him. You know what I'm saying? I booked a lot of shows for him, you know, but I wouldn't be his manager. I just, niggas would call me, hey, man, can you get Pimp on the phone, you know? Like how he man used to call, he used to call you be on the phone it was those kind of issues, but it was other people that had real business with him, and that shit you know went some kind of crazy way. But uh, he basically, you know, was trying to tell me, man, get there, you know, and bring some gangsters. And I was like, man, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with that, you know. But Seventeen was there. They went to uh, view the body at the morgue. He know more about it than me, and. Uh, you know, I mean, I talked to Bond, you know, all of them about it, man. I don't, you know, I don't know exactly what happened, but I know something happened. Yeah. Man, you don't, man, you don't get high most of your life. Like it's, you know, everyday thing. And then all of a sudden, something happened, man, on one little day. Everybody in Texas drink lean. Lean is, is common around here. Yeah, but if you, if you, if you. You know, you you know sometimes you can go a little too far, and some and sometimes, you know. Oh, lean can make you have overdose. What I'm saying, yeah, lean can kill you. I didn't know that. Lean can kill you. That's why they tell you not to drink it. Like they'll tell you only take it for so long, and after that, consult a doctor. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it can kill you. I'm I not saying that. that that's what he was doing. I'm just saying, I'm just clarifying. You know, uh, that yeah, lean can kill you. But do you think you think lean killed pimp? Man, I don't know. I, I I I was so heartbroken, bro. I was in the studio, because me and Pimp was supposed to do a, an album together, mm -hmm. and and I took for granted that I I would you know talk to him you know in the next few days. He had just changed his number, 
And I called Red Boy over at rap a to get his number. And Red said, well, I don't have it, but I can get it to you when I get to the office Monday. Monday came. I didn't call Red to remind him. And then Tuesday came, if my, if, if my memory serves me correctly, he died on a Tuesday, I believe. But I know that, that was the next day. We he, was at the funeral, he, man. It was you the was next day. Man. I seen you, yeah. you was mad. Yeah, he, yeah. He, I mean, yeah. man, you, you, yeah. hey, you, was, you was going off on folks. <laughs> I, I was right there. You, yeah. you, you ain't probably noticed me. No, I was I, right I there. Know, you said, I man, I can't believe that dude just did this. You, know, you yeah. was going off, man. Yeah, you, I, yeah, yeah, I was hot about that, yeah. bro. I was hot about that. But, yeah. you know, Pimp, my heart, his mama was my heart, one of the greatest uh, women I ever met in my life and a soldier. I'm talking about the type that, like a Maxine Waters type that'll go into the trenches with you. You know, a woman, you know, with, with, with uh, you know, that's, that with, with integrity, you know, strong uh, convictions, you know. She was one of those type of women. Yeah, man, Pimp, man, one thing I liked about Pimp, he always listened to me. You know, he, he came to my house, you know, he was going to put my kids in his will. You know, he, he slept over my house, you know. I had a big old house in Milwaukee. We had we used to have parties and all the celebrities would come. Pimp would come. He, he never charged me. He would do my parties. He would never charge me. And, you know, I did a movie called The Best of Both Worlds. Pimp did the entire movie for free. He didn't charge me a penny. You know, he asked me to come. I, you know, I've been on five Pimp C albums. I know you know mm -hmm. that. And one of Bum B's albums, you know, Jay used to call me, hey man, uh, call Ken, you know, I get on there and do the do the song, yeah. you know. But you know, we was close, man, and I seen them when he was fucked up, Willie. I'm talking about fucked up, fucked up, you know, fucked up, fucked up. Then I seen them when he came out of penitentiary, he was doing well. In both scenarios, Willie, he was the same nigga. Well, let's let's make sure that we understand why he was fucked up, fucked up, you yeah. know, because pimp. And Bun, they was really popular at the time. UGK was really popular. Pimp didn't want to get that album up. Yeah, he didn't. Want, he didn't want to get Jive that, that that last album. And you know, I, there's a story behind that why he finally gave it to him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when he did give it to him, things started, you know, turning around. Yeah, when um, they gave he gave it to him, I I I I, don't, I might if if I'm wrong, quote I think it was two million dollars. And he called me. It was him and Bumby was there. There's the Michael Jackson studio, and we did this song called Two Type of Bitches." And Pimp said, "Man, I'm gonna write you this check." You know what I'm saying? He said, "But you know, you gotta kick it back, right?" You know what I'm saying? So I was like, "You know, I mean, you know, he was doing some slick shit, man." But hey, he ate that motherfucker two million up so motherfucking quick, man. We were staying in the best of hotel. He said, "Can't order whatever the fuck you want, man." I was ordering motherfucking state strip, lobster, everything, man. That man's a mother. Hey, listen, man. For any what camera I'm on, this one. Hey, man, that man's a real player, man. You understand know yeah. me? And you know, niggas used to always say, hey man, it's pimp or pimp. I, I gave him, you know, one of the white girls that I was fucking with. I said, here, pimp, you can have this bitch. You know, and she gave him money and she paid him and everything. And I said that now nigga can't say that he wasn't in the game. You know what I'm saying? Because uh. a lot of niggas would say pimp ain't in the game. And I used to hear that shit. You know, when, when me and Zero and, and uh, uh, Jeezy was doing the get throw video, we was all at the video, and pimp would call me. And he said, man, what move I make on this on this scene? And Jeezy and, and uh, 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 Zero, they look like, they said, man, them niggas really fuck with each other. You know, I really laced him with game. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I used to send, I had bitches send a nigga naked pictures while he was in jail. Like, literally. You know, I mean, these hoes, man, they would do whatever I tell them. Hey, send that man some motherfucking pictures, man. Make that man time go by fast. And that's the kind of relationship we had. But I just want niggas to know that pimp loved the game. For all my peas out there, he loved the game. He loved the game. He, I, I mean, he. I, <laughs> you, you, know, but, you have to love the game when you when you start your name off with pimp. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he, he loved the game, man. I love that dude, man. Man, I miss yeah. him so much, Willie, man, because you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, I know you got them calls at four or five o'clock in the morning. That man saw like he got an Uzi in this bar. <laughs> That man wouldn't even stop, man. That man would call me and Ken. And yeah, man, the fucking bitch, man. You know? I'm like, man, I'm like, Pimp, you all right, man? And the man would talk for two hours. Then he'd, be, he'd call me. He said, Ken, I'm about to do some real shit, right? I said, what you about to do? Man, I get the call. Pimp on the radio cussing. Everybody out in the land. I said, oh, my God. I said, Pimp, we got to put the album out. I said, man, I'm on the album, man. I said, man, I, know these, I love these niggas in Atlanta, man. Pimp like, man, them niggas, woo the woo the woo woo the woo And then niggas calling me and say, what's up, man, with your boy, right? So I remember one time, uh, 
a slick puller, Jeezy guy, right? So I called the nigga Slick Puller, and Pip was right there. We was in uh, his, 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 his joint over there on West Time, that little, hot, hot, little apartment he had over there. Yeah. So we had the joint on West Time. So I'm calling Slick Puss and man, ain't no problem with Jeezy. I mean, Pip ain't tripping. And, you know, I didn't know, but Pip was standing by the door. He had his head by the door, listen to me. And D. Shane that was on there. So I opened the door, and Pip jumped up. His head was right there. He was making sure that I didn't say nothing crazy. But I told Slick Puss, I said, man, listen, man, we ain't got no issue with Jeezy. I said, man, with the woo, the woo. And they, sw- they swapped that out. A lot of people think it was an issue. No, Jeezy didn't do nothing. The record label sent that invoice over there for 60000 or whatever it was. And Pimp thought that Jeezy was trying to, you know, bust a move on because he was used to too short and E-40 now swapping music. You know how they did it back in the day. So he thought that Jeezy was, you know, on that. But Jeezy wasn't on that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Jeezy, they did a song called Dickies or some crazy stuff like that. And, 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 and you know, Pimp wanted to get it clear. And they was tripping. You know, but, you know, I, I kind of straightened that out, you know, and I got on the phone with Slick Puller and, you know, let him know, man, you know, we ain't got no issues, you know, uh, uh, pimp. Because, you know, all, all my, all my, 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 I ain't going to say my folks, but all the GD brothers, you know, they told Pimp, in Milwaukee at least, they told him, man, if you got a problem, we're going to put the whole force of the East Side gangster behind you. And Pimp knew that. And <laughs> Pimp was like, yeah, don't make me call my East Side folks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, man, Pimp was crazy, man. But, you know, you know, so, you know, I, I had to squash that, man, because I didn't want no drama. You know, I'm a peaceful brother of Willie. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, all my, my family is, is in that organizational type thing. But, you know, what I try to do is I try to keep the peace. Like right now, my organization, Hip Hop Turn, I got the GDs, the Vice Lord, and the Bloods under one umbrella. Every Monday night, they come to the ice bar. And there don't be no fights, no cussing. We've been doing this consistently for four years. You know, and that's why, you know, I believe that it had, take a brother like me that's neutral, that's not a Crip Blood or a GD or Vice Lord, that can get them brothers to see clarity. Man, what do you think about the intersection of pimping and hip hop and media. Well, that's what I, I I was trying to express on the Breakfast Club. I believe that if you go back to the days of Scarface, I'm talking about the uh the European, the Al Pacino the dude, yeah. right? That movie inspired a lot of young African American male to be one of the kind of drug dealers, right? And then after that, you know, you had colors. That inspired a lot of brothers wanting to be game bangers, Crips and Bloods. And then after that you had New Jack City, brothers start taking over the project. Hollywood has always been complicit in depicting and creating the narrative. So the narrative is that we are all game bangers, you know, we all drug dealers, and we all uh, sell crack in the projects. And we so naive that we follow these narratives and we take them and run with them. Well, the same thing happened with the pimp game. You know, pimps up, holes down. I know you remember that. Yeah. That was uh, a part of. My experience, I denounced on your show, Pimps Up, Holes Down, and American Pimp because it sent a lot of young African Americans to prison, not directly, but vicariously, right? Because of the culture and, like he was saying, how impressionable my people be, right? And because of that, you know, at the same time, just like they created the sentence enhancement laws in 1985 and the crime bill in 1994, Bill Clinton and uh, 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 the other brother, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 Joe Biden, you know, they created these laws. It created a mass incarceration problem, right? And the same thing happened with the pimp gang. Snoop Dogg pimping all over the world. You know, uh, Project Pat, you know, I'm a pimp like Ken, you know, uh, 50 Cent. You know, the same thing. If you're a pimp like Ken, why the hoes don't treat you? Uh, Snoop Dogg pimping all over us. Uh, T.I. Pimp Scott Click. You know, Nelly Pimp Juice. All that stuff created the environment with the pimping in the in the hip hop, right? And because of that, and because Europeans, you know, just like they just caught, you know, the brother on, on online. He had the gun in his back pocket, and they and they found him in uh, what's that uh, San Diego. You know, they said they 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 seen the gun, and they and the police. It was the hip hop police looking at it. Well, they look at music as well, and they say, okay, this is the direction they're going. Let's create a statue. It's five thousand statues on the federal statue. One of those statues is called human trafficking. They make a statue every day. I give you an example of uh, Boosie. You know, you know, Boosie. I just, I just did a book deal with him. You know, that's, that's that, 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 that book, Cross the Track. You know what I'm saying? That's on there, on, on that DVD. Yeah, I, I did. Track, right? Yeah, yeah, on the back. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. I, I, I did that book 
with Boosie across the track. But Boosie just beat the case. He beat the case, and when he beat the case, he beat the case because another dude had a similar case, and he argued the fact that because he didn't commit a crime that was of a violent nature, that therefore the trigger lock law doesn't apply to him. Boosie lawyer used that same president, that same case law, and got Boosie out. But then they came back. It's another law. And you got to remember talking about the United States versus Terrence Hatchet. They came out with another law saying that if you smoke drugs, if you, if you smoke weed or do any kind of drugs and you're an addict and you got a gun, that's an entire different charge. Well, the same thing with human trafficking. You know, if you have an underage girl, that's human trafficking. But they enhance it and they build up on the statute. And that's why, you know, we know that uh, these laws are designed to destroy our community. I think uh, Chester Willem called it the destruction of the black civilization. Uh, Kawanza Kajufa called it the conspiracy to destroy young black boys. And uh, my man, uh, uh, Dr. Naeem Akbar, called it the psychological image and changes of slavery. So there are many examples. And if you listen to Malcolm X, go, anybody that's listening, go listen to Malcolm X right now. You know what I'm saying? And then listen to Farrakhan right now. They saying, 50 years later after his death, they send the same exact message. And that message, 60 years later, that message is white supremacy, systemic racism. You know, yeah. Tyreek Nasheed had five uh, joints called Hidden Colors, and we still miss the, we missing the, the, the point. You know, it, it, it is white supremacy and it's hyperbolic, you know what I mean, and it's on, on steroids. And we got to understand that. And not only white supremacy, but systemic racism. You know, if, if we're missing the point after all that time, we're not trying to get the point. That's how it's as simple as that, because it's everywhere. If you can't see what's happening at this point, you know, you're not trying to see what's happening. You spoke about the glamorization of 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 pimping, right? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. In hip hop. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it accurate? Yeah, I just want to be clear. Is it accurate to say that that pimping had a more negative than positive effect on our culture? Well, no, pimping has nothing to do with the culture because 85% of these niggas ain't pimps. <laughs> No, so, no, no, so, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm no, saying the glamorization no. of it. You know, oh, like, oh, no, 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 I think Scarface. Because you just talked about well, I, you I, just I, talk think, I think Colors, the movie Colors had a negative uh, 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 depiction of our people, on our culture. I think uh, uh, Al Pacino, Scarface, uh, New Jack City, all these movies that we watch, Training Day, all it's Hollywood. It's not the movie. It's Hollywood depicting these imageries and pushing these narratives and this propaganda. That's what it is. It don't make a difference. Today is pimping. Guess what? Now they're talking about, what's that, fentanyl? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's going to always so, be something that they're going to use to target the community. I get you. But, but pimping but, but, is but, definitely no. Pimp is not the reason because as a former pimp and, a, and one of the top ones in the game, I didn't see these dudes, man. I didn't see Snoop. I didn't see T.I. I didn't see none of them dudes out there on the blade, on the track. So what, what that's I'm, not the yeah, reason. What, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to just get a clear <laughs> you know, answer from you about is, do you believe that pimping in and of itself, the whole imagery of pimping, the glamorization, uh, what it is, the reality of pimping, do you believe that it has a more of a positive or a negative effect on? Oh, it's definitely our have a it's a, it's a it's a definitely a positive a, a negative effect on our community, but you got to understand. You got to remember. Go back to pimps up, hoes down, Willie. Right before pimps up, hoes down, was nobody talking about no pimping like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you when you when you, you when you put Hollywood in the equation, and Hollywood become complicit, you do American pimp. And then, you know, these people see Pimp and Ken on here with the minks and the diamonds, and I'm popping fast. Now they see imagery. But let me tell you something about the culture of crime, right? You know, I, I was a bank robber. I used to rob banks. I used to rob jewelry stores. You know what I'm saying? I, sold, I tried to sell dope. You know, I was a pimp. But out of all that, pimping is the most elite of all the hustles because it's the only game where you got the ING. The ING means I'm not going to send a bitch, right? Uh, I'm, not what? I'm not going to send a bitch. ING. I'm not going, pimping, I'm not going, send a bitch. Now, <laughs> now, 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 listen, though, you could be a pimp. You know, a lot of people say they could pimp. A pimp is a noun. 
right? That's a person, okay. place, a thing. But pimping is an action verb. That means you're active and attractive, right? You're really in the game. You're really doing that. Most people just say, I'm a pimp, but they never pimping. They never got the ING. So you upset, and that's the most elite of the game. And that goes back to what Goldie, Goldie pretty much delineate what I'm saying, but he said it in a more player-like way. He said that, man, most of these dudes can't even control, you know, they can't see that bitch to the grocery store and ask for they change so then, So then what you know happens what when these dudes see the glamorization of it and decide they want to try pimping and they can't even manage their emotions? Now you see these dudes who beating on these women and now you get give the black eye to the game because these dudes who had no business pimping just because they saw it on TV and didn't have a temperament for it or it got laced the right way, now when the bra get out of pocket, he don't know how to handle it. He don't know how to let it go. So now he want to go shoot the next dude that uh, she got with her. Now he want to beat on her. Pimps, and right? that's not a pimp because that's yeah, not how see? you're supposed to be late. Give Absolutely. me a name for him. Huh? Give, him, give me a name. He's not a pimp. What simps. Simp? Yeah, that's what they are. They simp. But, but, but. Go, give me another name. Goldie got another name. I, uh, I can uh, tell uh, you. He was right uh, on the A buster, a sucker. You know, that's <laughs> a <laughs> bad simp. <laughs> you know, a yeah. buster, a sucker. That's, that's a dude okay. who can't control his emotions. A right. dude who acts like a woman. You know, dudes who have bitch tendencies are more the most dangerous person in the world because they're going to act out of emotion. But when a man acts out of emotion like a woman but has male strength, you know, that's dangerous for everybody. But mm -hmm. you're right, though. It is negative. I denounce uh, pimps up, hoes down. I denounce American pimp. I denounce anyone who promotes pimping and prostitution in a way that it can destroy our children. So, for the record, just you know, make it known that I don't condone it. I don't condone human trafficking. I don't condone you know forced prostitution and none of that stuff. Now, I will say for the record as well that because of my just observation, I know that ninety nine point Nine percent of the women out there does not have a pimp now, you know. Even you know, if you look at today's pimp, my man Sauce Walker, who's from Houston, right? He had a woman on there. She got three million dollars from showing her feet on OnlyFans. People say, I said, man, he the best ever did the guy. Well, he said, kid, how are you gonna say that? I said, because man, you know, that is ingenious. That's evolution. If the man can get all that money from a female. And he ain't sitting out there putting it in harm's way. He ain't put it in the club or nothing like that. He just got on the internet. That means that he's a, he has evolved. Now, in the pimping, to all my pimps out there, if you're doing the same thing at 40 that you did at 20, as Martin Luther King, as uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Ali said, yeah. you, you lost 20 years. You know, so that's the problem. You know, it's just that, you know, like me, you know, my hoe is my, uh, my DVD. My hoe is my book. You know, she don't argue with me. She don't fight. Ain't nobody gonna knock her. You know, I just I just look at it different, right? Yeah. And that's how we I pimp the situation. You know, when you see me going to Simon and Schuster, the biggest publisher company, and getting a deal with Boosie and doing six figures, or going to get Ice T or Corey Wise, you know, doing big deals like that, or, or or the liquor deal with me and my man Steve Love. So Steve Love, my partner, people don't even know. You know what I'm saying? I told people I said with with, with Arcanelli from um, uh. uh the uh, uh, King of Diamonds in Atlanta, when he bought that $20,000 worth of Boosie liquor, he bought it for me. But people didn't even know that I was intertwining those deals. You know, I'm inter intertwining in all kind of deals. So I'm pimping on a whole nother level. You know, I'm pimping these Europeans, man. I'm pimping these corporations. You know, I have a C-Corps. You know what I'm saying? I have a, a, a parent company with nine companies. I have my own, I have HHF Magazine. I have HHF uh, uh Radio. I have HHF social media. I have my own social media, just like Facebook. I have HHF awards. You know, it goes down real big in Atlanta. Every, you know, so I learned how to pimp myself. So when people say, "Why you still call yourself pimping Ken?" Because I'm pimping Ken. I'm pimping me now, and uh. niggas can't even understand it. It's too. It's too far over the head. You know. You said something too. You said, "Is it the reality that they're glamorizing?" And you could ask him, but I'd say it's not. Dudes don't understand the type of woman most of the time that is attracted to that type of lifestyle or dysfunctional. We'll say it now, which you ten years ago you wouldn't say it. Mental illness. You know, they've been molested. Their parents was on on drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, they're m mentally messed up. And it takes a, a certain type of individual to be able to deal with that. You know, and most dudes could not and wouldn't want to. It's not as glamorous as you think, dealing with a bunch of crazy, mentally ill women who have a lot of deep uh, trauma, you know, and it comes out in all these different ways. So, you know, these dudes out here, it's like this. I tell dudes, they come to me for coaching, and they, they talk about this pimp shit, and I try to tell them, what is it that makes you want to be a quote-unquote? What, what are you looking at? Let's break it down. And most of the time, I tell them, listen, everything that you glamorize and see about the game, you don't got to be in the game to do it. If you want to have multiple 
to a woman, you can have that. If you want to have control of your household, you can have that. If you want to dress slick, talk slick, you can do that. Play game on a bigger level, man. I'm going to tell you like this, and a lot of people ain't going to like it. Man, there's nothing impressive to me about you being able to convince some slow 18, 19-year-old to give you some money. That's not impressive. What's impressive to me is can you take your game and do big game and do big business, have employees, run a, run a sophisticated business, you know, Which sell a— real sell, Yeah, that's real game. So if you still just playing this little game, man, that's, that's, that's nothing. They play Playing big game, politicians, corporations, that's big game they running around here. So you can't impress me with that little game. And I would say, man, just look at the bigger game of the bigger world. And they, they, they asked me, they said, how did you send a young boy, eight years old, King Moore, to the White House? I said, man, you know, if you change your mentality, you'll change your reality. You got to change your attitude to change your aptitude. You know, everything that we see, you know, you can change it your paradigm by changing your thinking. You know, I look at it like this. When I was a kid, I said, I got to change something because if you do what you always done, you're going to get what you always get. If you want to do something you ain't never done, you got to do something you ain't never did. So when you change your life one fraction, you know, say, I ain't going to put no holes out there on the street no more. I'm going to uh, turn my DVDs into holes. I'm going to turn these property into holes. You know, just one little fraction will change the whole trajectory of your life. And I think that that's what these young people need to understand that, you know, leaders are readers. You know, you got to definitely read and you got to be a thinking man. The Honorable Noble Joe Lee said, if I can get my people to think, they'll save themselves. I think it was Shakespeare said, or one of those uh, philosophers, uh, maybe with Socrates, as a man think of so, so is he. he. So, yeah. you know, that is the key to all of this transition uh, and, and transformation, you know. And another thing, Willie, I want to talk about real briefly, because I, I like to make this analogy, is sexual transformation. Transmutation. Transmutation, excuse me. So sexual transmutation simply means that you're transmuting your desire for sex for your desire for your goals. You know, the same amount of stimuli that you put into your sexual appetite, you need to put into the appetite for succeeding. And you will see a, tr a tremendous change just by changing your thinking. Man, say, man, we talking game right here. Look, let me tell you something. Growing up, I liked to be around women just as much as any other man. Mm -hmm. But... When my money wasn't right, when my money was funny, I ain't figure like I deserved no woman. I ain't, I didn't deserve to be. I thought like I looked at a woman as like a reward, like having sex was like a reward to me. Right. So I didn't feel. I, I couldn't even get excited. Like when I was broke, money ain't right, money funny. I can't even get excited. So I don't even know how dudes be broke, and be like, and all they can think about. It's sex. Get it, Goldie. The great female. He got the perfect answer what, for what, you. What you mean? The, the, the great female con. Oh, you want me to break that down? Break putting, the pussy up, putting the pussy down on the lower pedestal. Well, well, this is what I'm saying. He's saying break down the great female con. That's what we out here. We're on this crusade, right? And I call it the great female con, right? The woman has tricked the man by every metric, apples to apples, oranges to oranges. If you take every metric, the woman is always, almost always less valuable than the man. But women as a collective have put this great female con on the world to make the man believe he's less valuable than the woman. And it's ingenious. You see these athletes, they got all this success, all this fame, all of this money, and then they have this woman coming in the household telling me what he can and can't do, making him feel like she's the prize, when on every metric from financially, status-wise, all of these things, he's more valuable. And the, these dudes do it in a relationship. If I'm coming in and I'm paying all the bills and I'm taking care of the household, how is it that my woman is running the situation? Because she is the great female con to make a man believe that she is more valuable when in reality, he, the man is almost always more valuable. Where does a woman derive her value from? Her looks. Looks fade. How can some destined to go away be more valuable than a man when a man's value is based on his utility which he could have a utility at 70 years old you will see a 70 year old man with a 20 year old woman but you'll never see a 70 year old woman with a 20 year old man what's most valuable in society about most women is something that always goes away which makes the man by default always with the potential to be more valuable and that's what we out here doing trying to wake dudes up to their value uh, how you got the lord the, the you got to take coaching. the pussy off the pedestal right these dudes put the pussy up here so when they come into the room when when the pussy is up here Guess what? She's looking down on you. If you take a woman out to eat, right, if you take her to a concert, if you take her on a vacation, what does she give you in return for that? 
pussy. She gives you pussy. Why? Because you've elevated to me so much. The only way you will start having reciprocal behavior from a woman is when you lower the pussy of, of the value of the pussy. You got to take the pussy off the pedestal, put it in its proper perspective. Now the woman has to come with something else. If you do something nice for her now, oh, pussy ain't nothing to me. Well, now what she have to come with? Something of equal value. And that's all I'm saying is... Stop overvaluing the pussy. Stop overvaluing these looks. When you bring her down to your level, now you see it I value. And now that conversation is different. <laughs> Boom. Boom. That's game right there. That's, That's game one-on-one on one right there, man. Y'all out here doing God's work. Hey, I yeah. say it all the time. We doing God's work for real. Hey, Listen, man. we saving people because if you don't recognize your value, you're going to let everybody around you devalue. And a lot of these dudes out here is living quiet lives of desperation, and I can't stand it. I'm looking at this dude. He goes to work all day. He takes care of his family. He takes care of his wife, and his wife is giving him hell, not realizing, hey, you have three kids. There's not too many men out here that are going to want to come and take care of you. But guess what? Even though I got three kids, it's plenty of women who would want me to come take care of them so i'm more valuable talk to me like it but you ain't gonna talk to me like it if i don't demand it and i'm not gonna demand it unless i recognize my own value so that's all we're doing is we want men to recognize their value and i'm not saying have false value work on yourself be in a gym have some discipline don't lie but don't devalue yourself and let your woman know no i have value you know and that's a, that's one thing that the pimp has done successfully you know, he's, he tell the woman, he said, I got to meet on my Peter. The longer you stay, the longer you got to pay his purse, purse and ass last, <laughs> right? He said, if you think I'm handsome, pay my ransom. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what the pimp say. But the way Goldie's saying it is the way all men should look at it. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and yeah. I'm naturally, what he's saying, that's naturally me. I'm, I'm, I'm naturally putting the pussy on the low pedestal. But what I'm saying, if all men done that and they follow, you know, what Goldie is saying and they follow those principles, that's the favorite thing. I always make them uh, remember this. <laughs> say that because I think that that's the real problem with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're leading with your little head and not your big head, guess what? You know what I'm saying? You're going to let your little head out beat your big head. Uh -huh. and, and that's... You, oh, go yeah. ahead, bro. Oh, no, go ahead. No, that's why there's so many wars. You know, I mean, if you look at any situation in relationship that you had with friends, there was three reasons why y'all broke up. One was money, the other was power, and the other was pussy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and you can't deny that. That those are the three problems that men have with with with, with life. You know, they can't. You know, some of them, you know, you, they get a little record, they get a hit record. Now they don't want to ask your phone calls. You know, now they think they're on your level. You know, um, uh, 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 they get a little money. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know. They think, you know what I'm saying, they rule the world now. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I ain't going to say what brother, but it happened to one brother up here, and me and Pimp C was talking about it. His brother, you know, he had, a, he had he had got a little money, and he bought some slick cars, and, you know, everything went down. You know what I'm saying? Here, in this city. You know what I'm talking about. I ain't got to say the name. You know what I'm saying? Me And then the, ne the next thing, you know, you look at uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather. You know, a lot of times he had problems. It'd be like dudes talking about they had sex with, like him and Ray J. What is their problem about? A woman. You know, Ray J. ended up marrying a woman that Floyd Mayweather had. It's all the pussy is always in the equation. So when you lower the pussy, if Ray J. get the woman, it's no problem because it ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Me, me and this woman cannot commute. Or we cannot communicate eye to eye anymore. So that's what he said. Listen, if yeah. you let her treat you like you Clark Kent, you're going to forget you Superman. And a lot of these dudes have let her treat him less than he deserves. He forgets he's Superman all the things he's doing. If you let her treat you like you Peter Parker, you're going to forget that you Spider-Man. When I was younger <laughs> and I was in the clubs, my that's uncle... That's a cold my, my, my uncle, this, Listen, I've been running off this paradigm, and this is a paradigm I like to give other men. When I was younger, 16, 17, I would go to the club. My uncle would get me in the club. I would see this fine, young, red bone, everything, light right, everything right. I'm trying to get at her all night. She playing with me. My uncle put his hand on my shoulder. He said, stop looking at that fine little bitch that you want and start looking at that funny little bitch in the corner that's looking at you. Because that broad that you want, she's going to give you a problem. She's already giving you one. But that broad in the corner, she's going to do everything you want. And that changed my paradigm to stop chasing who I want and start looking at the one that's looking at me. And these dudes are in poor relationships because they chose wrong. You cannot fix it because you got a woman who didn't really like you. How you start is how you finish. You started chasing this woman. And if you chasing, what does that mean? How are you going to chase the woman, which means you following her, then get with her and then tell her, all right, now I'm the leader, follow me. You started wrong. You can't do it. You have to get the woman who's looking at you, who's going to do everything for you, who loves you, dirty draws. It's a form of self-hate these dudes have to chase a woman that's denying them and then denying the woman that wants them. You have to start looking at the woman that likes you. If she likes you a lot, if she looks at you like you, Chris Brown, she's going to do everything you want and you have that respect. These women talk to these men 
in such a disrespectful way because they don't like them. A woman who likes you don't talk to you like that. She don't disrespect you like that. She don't like you. So go get a woman who does. Cody, I'm going to ask you a question, right? What about, now the same scenario, like all the bad bitches, I can't get the ugly bitches. Listen. All, listen, let me finish. Okay, go ahead. All the bad bitches, right, want to fuck with me. Yeah. A, a, a broke bitch or a crazy bitch or, you know, I mean, I just can't get them bitches. The only bitches that will fuck with me is the cute bitches. You and mean I, the ugly bitches? No, the, the oh, fine bitches. Oh, okay, okay. I don't get, man, listen. <laughs> all the bitches I had, you know what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. All the bitches I ever had over my career been uh -huh. bad bitches. Okay. So I'm saying, how does that apply when you say the little funny bitch in the corner when I know all the bitches that like you be bad? So you, is, that me, for, is that for them? No, no, no. Not, or is that for everybody? I live by that, man, because pretty is what pretty does. Man, I don't care how you look. I don't care how you look. No, I'm we, saying bad bitch. I'm talking money getting bitches. Like, it still applies. I don't care what you look like. Pretty is what pretty does. No, no, no. I understand that. Yeah. My point is... You said, quit looking at the bitch you want and quit mm -hmm. looking at And start looking at the bitch that you want. So, yeah, it's looking what at you. about if the bitch that you want looking at you? That's all I'm saying. Oh, well, then, well, that's the same thing. Whoever's exactly. looking at okay, you is like, not... who, like who like you. Nah, that, that, <laughs> you nah, 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 I was asking because I know a lot of niggas yeah, going to be like, yeah, you hey, know, man, I get, ooh, it's ooh, an, ooh, yeah, ooh. It's like who like you because what's right. the, the biggest self-compliment you can have is to like somebody who says they appreciate you and the biggest okay. disrespect you can so do to yourself. So don't make a difference if you're funny looking or you're pretty. Yeah, yeah. It's like who like you. The biggest disrespect you can give yourself is to chase somebody who's telling you you ain't enough. Enough. That's I all I'm it. saying. Yeah, that's it. Start with self love and self respect. I, I just wanted to, to, to ask that on the yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. You ain't never asked me that before. That's it, right there, fam. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. When we start talking about the, a lot of this toxicity that we have in these relationships, man, you know, like who who like you and what's that last uh, quote that you just uh, made where you said um, that self respect thing that you said. You said something about self respect. Having self respect. How you gonna chase somebody, and you want to lead, and then you know what I'm saying you you, you well, the, chasing the, her. The bottom the the bottom line is that is to have self respect. Yeah, self respect. Because yeah. because because when you have self respect, you know that self respect exudes. And, and so she and, respects and, you. And she, if you start respecting yourself first, and then it's just one of those things you have an air about yourself. People just exactly. people just automatically you respect you. How could a woman Listen, respect you if she knows that you chasing her, doing yeah. all of this stuff to get her? You started wrong. You wonder why you don't have respect in your relationship because you came at her in an unrespectable manner. You chasing her. She's denying you. You paying for this. You paying for that. You think your money is making her respect you? No. It's making her not respect you even more because you have to buy her. Women don't never love a trick. These dudes think they got respect or they these big bosses because they can pay for some shit. You don't know these women are laughing at you behind your back because she know a real man don't do that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She wonder why your woman uh, be all on top of you in the house and, and uh, going through your phone because she know you a trick. And so she know because you tricked on her to get, get her, you're going to trick on the next woman when you see her. That's why my women don't give me no problem because they know I'm a man of respect and principles. They know when I go out, man, it's going to be hard for a woman to get up on me because that's on how the I got there. We've been on the road for yeah. three, three, three weeks and we ain't got no phone calls about where we've been. <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey, but uh, 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 before we go, brother, uh, this is the 50th anniversary. I would like to talk about Hip Hop Fraternity if you don't have a problem with that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, uh, you know, it was inspired by brothers like you and, uh, you know, Scarface and E-40 and Too Short, Pimp C, Bomb B, you know, the guys that, you know, I've been hanging out with for the years and you know we wanted to do something for the kids so we started this organization called Hip Hop Fraternity in Atlanta four years ago we feed the kids for free we let them perform for free and we let them in for free and park for free and the reason why we do that because we say if Gmail is free if IG is free if Facebook is free then why can't we be free right and uh, we also understand the four sectors of power right so Hip Hop Fraternity look at it from a holistic perspective. We know you got Washington, D.C. It's a lot of us there. We got a lot of lawyers and lobbyists and Washington, D.C. congressmen. Then the next one is uh, uh, Wall Street. It's not that many of us there. You know, we're a small percentage there. Then the next one is uh, Silicon Valley. We're not too many there. Then final is uh, uh, Hollywood, you know, media. So we wanted to create those four sectors. So we created our own businesses inside of that orbit to create financial uh, literacy and uh, generational wealth, right, and legacy. 
So that's one of the things that we're doing at the Hip Hop Fraternity, teaching brothers about cryptology, ASCAP, BMI, CSAT, NFCs, uh, NFTs, and, and, and the blockchain. So, you know, that's one of the things that we want to get to brothers. And all this can be taught for free at hhfmedia.com. That's my social media. They go there, we got free curriculum. Once they join, they can get the curriculum for free, and they can see all the other things that we do. You can post on my uh, social media. You can post your, your music and everything like that. And the reason why we uh, started this organization is because we understand that hip-hop has been divisive. It's been divisive, right? Uh, East Coast versus West Coast, you know, the South versus New York, uh, uh, Bad Boy versus uh, Death Row, No Limit versus Cash Money, all this divisiveness in hip-hop. So when I looked up the name Hip Hop Fraternity, Brother uh, Willie, it was available, and it shocked me. You know, clever people, you know, that's calculated, you know, they're going to buy the domains, they're going to buy the trademarks. So we was able to trademark that name because they always wanted us to be separate and they wanted us to be at odds with each other. You know, they, they, you know, they love when we create feud, you know, when we kill each other because they make money. They probably got insurance on most of these brothers, which I heard they do. So when we seen that their name was Vela, we went to Atlanta and we said, brothers, y'all need to try unity. Y'all need to try unity. And we was able to unify it. And now we have 10,000 members. We have over 35 chapters. We got brother, uh, 10, what, say it again? 10,000 members. And 35, 35 chapters, chapters and 100 executives. And we got the brother uh, so serious. He's our uh, CEO here in uh, Houston, Texas. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Yeah. That's good stuff. Boy, that's, that is good stuff, man. It, it's one thing to do for yourself, but, man, when you do for others, man, that's that's beautiful, man. Uh, how, how, how do someone contribute financially to your organization? Well, we just started uh, our C Corp. So now uh, we're working with, uh, I don't know if, you know, we're working, we, we talked to Charlemagne and Envy. We talked to uh, Langton King, which is connected to my man, Floyd Mayweather. Uh, Ice-T is a member. He's my national advisor. So we doing equity partnership with celebrities like yourself, you know, giving them, you know, uh, stock options and shares in the company so we can create this orbit where the next phase, and we already just had one guy uh, invested $100,000 in the organization. The shares is $100 a piece. We got a million shares. So the capitalization and, and the, the, the uh, power value of the shares being 100 which give us a, a, a evaluation of $100 million. And when people invest in the hip-hop fraternity, what they invest, they invest in the culture. You know, like you said, Bitcoin. So, you know, we need to invest in this culture. And it's going to be just like, uh, what you call it, uh, 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 Apple. It's going to be like uh, Facebook. You know, those who get in early are going to benefit the most. Because once the celebrities announce, you know, their participation, we do, you know, you know, it, it, what you do, you get a broker, and then they do the venture capitalists and the private equity companies, and they come in, we have our investment meeting, you know, if you're not in on the early stage, the minute they find out that all these big names is going to go up 10x. So those shares are going to be worth a thousand, and this company is going to be worth a billion dollars. And hip hop is the second largest export of uh, of American export. Hip hop is known as the new Black Wall Street. Why you say that, Ken? Black Wall Street. The GDP of Black Wall Street was 2.5 billion dollars. Jay Z is worth. $2.5 billion. Kanye was worth allegedly $6 billion, three times the GDP of an entire community. So black hip-hop is the new black Wall Street. This is where all the define. How many billionaires have it created? There's no other sector in the uh, history of this country in terms of African Americans is, is concerned where it created five billionaires. And untold amount of millionaires, you know, from being in the culture yourself. So what do that mean? That means it's our culture, our call. So we have a duty amongst ourselves to invest in ourselves. You know, and, and, and everybody that loves hip hop need to invest in hip hop fraternity. Don't look at it, you know, from my perspective because I'm not even the CEO. CB Jane CB Gray is our CEO, and Sister Kentrice, she's our COO. You know, and we have clothing line. We have a hip hop fraternity. I know. I don't know if you've seen the Breakfast Club. You know, uh, 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 the, the the dude that make the clothes. He got uh, the jackets for Charlemagne and all them people, right? You know, though that that's just where we at with it. So people say, how are you gonna make money? Okay. Cause I know that's what the question. Okay, we sell the we sell we sell we no nah, listen we sell. No, the, I was about to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I seen you. I seen that. I seen your eyes going. So yeah. if you, we okay. So far, we just sold over two thousand jackets. Jackets sell at uh, uh twenty two hundred two hundred fifty dollars or three hundred dollars, depending on you know if they want to customize. And that's, how many sold? We sold two thousand. 
two thousand jackets. Six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just because we would have sold more, but the manufacturer we was dealing with, you know, they it, it was some things that was, so we had to get a new manufacturer. So 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 if we got ten thousand members, you know, we got Charlemagne wearing a jacket. We got Snoop Dogg. He got a jacket. You go get you a jacket. I'm gonna make sure I get you a jacket. Everybody wearing the jackets. That's gonna create uh, a, a motivational motivation in, in, into the consumers to buy it because they see it's about our culture. And knowing that we got the 50th anniversary. So if we sell one million jackets, how much money is that? For how much? One, uh, for for two hundred. Uh, three hundred million dollars. So that's what I'm saying. So it's easy to make that money. You know, and, and and once you guys come on, all the celebrities come on, Ice-T is already on my board. If you go to hhfmedia.com and hit board members, you see Ice-T, Yuck Mouth. You know, you know Yuck Mouth. He used to be here all the time. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Sumo, your homeboy, you know, the D DJ. All those people, J DJ Dagwa, these are all people that's on my uh, board. So as we begin to scale and we get that growth capital, that's what that money, that initial capital will be. And, and we and market how, it. And how, and how do they get there again? What's the... What's the uh, HHFmedia.com. HHF. HHF. Hip Hop Fraternity. Media.com. Media. Or you go to com. the Hip Hop Fraternity.com. But the short way to get there, just type, you go both ways. You can navigate both ways. HHF Media. Or you go to the Hip Hop Fraternity.com. And if you want to be an investor, you can call me directly at 404 790 9627. I know a lot of y'all are going to be calling to ask for record deals. I get that all the time, but I, that's cool. I still answer, answer the phone. So, you know, that's what we are doing, you know. Yeah. And like I said, we're raising money and we're also getting equity partners. And it's going to be the biggest thing ever, man. So, uh, you know, Goldie, you know, he, he pledged to spend $200,000. He put about $200,000 worth of stock. He's going to be an owner of the company. So we have a lot of people that got money that's going to be owners and that's influencers. And once he make his investment, you're going to see him pushing. You know Mike Fresh? No. Uh, throw that ass in the circle. She Mike, bounced Mike when she Fresh walked. Why, he's from, he's, he's, he's from he's, here? He, he, he's from Louisiana, but he lives in uh, okay. uh, Fort Worth. Yeah. Fort Worth. So he he yeah. signed to me too. He got 20 billion streams. He got the number one streaming uh, song in the in, in, on TikTok. He, they got 20 billion, and the other one got like 16 billion. So he signed to me as well. So we got brothers like that that's pushing the narrative, that's going on platforms. Goldie gonna be pushing it. So it's gonna be like a self-contained type thing. We're gonna it's gonna be organically, you know, successful because we're gonna all push it. All us that yeah. love hip hop. Yeah, I love what you're doing, man. Keep keep going, brother. I ain't got to tell you that, but I said it anyway because it sound good. Um, Goldie, hey, hey, man, welcome to the club. You in? I you know what I'm saying? You, you got you got you 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 got that good game, as my man in Cleveland, you know, would say. Good game, but, um, good game. Yeah, you got good game, man, and uh, it's important for guys like you to speak out. You know, to like to speak up and speak out because a lot of us. We need that information, man. Yeah, we need that information. Sure. We, 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 we've been unlearned. And now it's time to actually, you know, get some good game and learn, yeah. you know, how to actually just be in a relationship. And even before we get into a relationship, hell, first of all, just be in a relationship with ourselves, yeah. be in love with ourselves, because yeah, yeah. that's where it starts, hey, that's right? The, that's the first module of right. my game, God Mentality Courts, is self-love, man, because that's where everything stems from, man. Right. If you don't love yourself, if you don't treat yourself to the utmost, you'll allow anybody to come in and treat you less than that. But when you treat yourself up right here, anybody who comes in got to treat you there. Woman, man, anything. So that's where it started. Start with self. It start with the man first. Fam. Hey, man, and I'm also on... Uh, on, on Trick Alert with Ugly Money and Biz. And uh, shout out to my man Boss Talk, my man Behind, all you all KD. podcasts. KD, my man KD, that made all the jewelry. KD the jeweler, Sell me man. this protect, man, for 80000 <laughs> You know, it's plain Jane, but y'all know nothing about that. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, hey, man, shout out to all the people that's been in the hip-hop fraternity that support us. Shout out to my girl Mallory, that's the CEO of Atlanta, and her team, uh, Angel, and my man Skip. And shout out to my main man, Vado, and my son. You know, my son is in that movie, uh, All-American, right? You know, you see that on on, uh, on Netflix. You know, he, and, yeah. So shout out to my little son, Ken. Oh, I haven't watched it yet. That's yeah. a series. Yeah, it's a series. That's okay. my son on there. The yeah, Life's gonna do number fourteen. Okay, okay. It's Ken okay. Ivy Jr. Classes okay. too. Huh? I'm talking about the classes. The the gang class. classes. Oh yeah, the gang classes. Uh, me and him got gang classes. And how how do they go there and check it out? Uh, GoldieRatio.com, YoungGoldie underscore on Instagram. 
Uh, we do the game calls every week. You know, I got the game guy mentality course. If you want to get these frameworks on how to think like a game, how to unleak, unlock the game guy within you, we got that. Got the manhood ebooks, man, and I got free game every day in the community with over two thousand people. We just chopping game every day to get you and keep you right. And I'm gonna talk about my, my books. I got the two books: the Forty Eight Laws of Game, Pimpology. Uh, uh, put out by Simon Schuster, the biggest publishing company in the world, and also the Art of Human Chess. And uh, go check out my son at One the Great Supreme, and you can follow me at at Real Pimp Ken underscore. Last one, shout out, uh, shout out <laughs> Kaze. You know they they make dresses for all of my women, like diamond encrusted dresses, man, and they phenomenal. Kaze C A S Z E underscore on Instagram, man. Diamond dresses, you want to get fly? That's where you got to go. Game Amen. God Goldie, Pimpin Ken Ivy. I appreciate y'all, man. Man, this has been a, bless, a blessing, man. Yeah. Hey, man, you know you my favorite person, man. I mean, you know, I grew up on the Ghetto Boys. You know, a lot of niggas, they, they ain't grew up on y'all. I grew up on y'all. And I, I hate to say this. I hope people don't take this right, man. I, I was carrying a pistol back then. <laughs> so, you know, a lot yeah, of that stuff, man. I hope man, you're still carrying a pistol. <laughs> a lot of that stuff, man, y'all was just saying, man, I, I, it, it had me hype, man. I used to ride around my playing tricks on me. I used to ride around with that man with that nine, them two nines on me, man. I was like, man, so it's crazy. I know I, I know you, but it's crazy to be actually on your show, man. And you know, you blessed me with this opportunity, man. And I used to literally, you know, when I was on my gangster shit, man, I used to I, ghetto boys is all I listened to. Yeah, well, you know? we appreciate it, man. We was just trying to keep you alive, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, you, and you here, man, and you got the game, and now you're spreading it. You know, it's often said that a good student will become the teacher. Yeah. This is the manifestation. I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate you. That's it, fam. No more talk.